Hello and welcome to Mediumship Matters with me, Hannah McIntyre. How are you doing? And today I'm working through some more listener questions just so that when you guys do the kindness of sending me a question in, you can actually feel like it's going to be answered before the next millennium. So I'm currently two months behind. We'll get there, we'll get there. Now, first of all, I want to answer a question that was sent in by Laura, who uh, messaged wanting to know about options for people that can't afford to do courses, but really want to develop their spiritual connection. So first of all, for anybody that wants to develop their spiritual connection, you need to be clear on what it is that you want to develop. Are you wanting to do more evidential mediumship? Or are you, or, or psychic, are you wanting to be able to do it to be able to do readings? Or are you wanting to be able to develop that connection for yourself to find that strength of spirit with you, around you, within you? Because that's two very different um, approaches to development. So let's start with connecting to spirit for self first. And this is the thing that changed my life. This is the thing that brought me so much comfort, so much love for myself because I suddenly learnt self-worth through spirit. Not suddenly, it took years, but you know what I mean. And um, for me, it was about making sure that I created space to be able to communicate with spirit. So when you're busy, 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 go, go, go all the time, spirit haven't got any space to work with you. So it's about being dedicated, not necessarily meditating, but spending a good 15, 20 minutes a day where possible, just sitting and asking spirit to come be with you. That is absolutely crucial. And of course, you will doubt and you will wonder if you're making it up, etc, etc, etc. But just do it anyway. (laughs) And the more that you do it, the stronger that connection will be, the stronger that bond becomes. It's like learning to fine tune your radio in to the best signal. You're not going to get it right straight away. And sometimes you might think you've tuned into that station and then find out that it's completely crackly and you haven't got it right but that's good, practice makes perfect. So I would invite spirit in and I would experience as many different spirits as you can. So I would invite spirit guides in to be with me and then I perhaps might invite an ascended master in one day to come and be with me. So for those of you that don't know, ascended masters are master teacher energies like Jesus, Buddha, Vishnu, Krishna, who come and bring their own vibration um, and their own frequency of energy in to be with you. So they're always slightly different to spirit guides, slightly different feeling to spirit guides, but a really interesting energy to sit with. Angels, um, intergalactic energies, uh, loved ones in spirit, not just your own, but other people's loved ones in spirit. Ask them to come and be with you. And it doesn't have to be people you know. You can just say, Spirit, I would love to communicate with somebody today who's somebody's loved one in spirit but has no connection to me at all and just feeling into that space. And of course, you're going to have to learn to trust what you're picking up. But that's really how you do it. You just open up, open up. And then I think it's really great to start practicing receiving information from them. So you can start with things like, I've got a question, here's my question, can I receive an answer? And allowing that answer to come. Um, And sometimes you'll just know the answer and sometimes it will be words and sometimes you won't really feel like you're getting anything. And then you'll stop your 20 minute sit and you'll go into the kitchen to make a cup of tea and then lo and behold the information's just there or they'll find a way to get it to you over the next few days but all of those kind of synchronicities start to make you realize there's more at play here than just your imagination and your hope so that's always really good ways of 
communicating feeling. Then you can move into spaces where you start channeling guidance and information from spirit. Uh, so for some, sometimes it's almost like poetry, but it's not not quite. Um, anyway, if it was my guides, it'd probably be more like a limerick, but you know what I mean. And they bring you, uh, yeah, beautiful words. So you can ask them about healing, or you can ask them about the purpose of spirit, or you can ask them about the meaning of life, or you can ask them just anything that pops into your head and just write down or say out loud, start recording what you get in those moments and seeing the beauty of the words that spirit can bring. And as always, it's not about expecting to get it right immediately. And one of the greatest things I ever heard was a teacher saying um, that at the beginning, rather than worrying about it being 100% spirit, just be happy with it being 95% you and 5% spirit. Because let's be honest, 5% spirit is a miracle. And rather than worrying about whether it's you or them or you're right or you're wrong, just flow with it. And if you can get yourself into that space, you will find that that 5% of spirit becomes 6, becomes 7, becomes 8. And before you know it, it's half spirit and half you. And then it still just continues in that vein. So experiment with it, play with it, but don't be afraid to ask and don't be afraid to say to them, I'm looking to develop, I want experiences from you that are going to help me develop. And as always, I think that the mediumship journey, the spiritual development journey, we think it's going to be external, we think it's about communicating with the spirit world and we find out it's about us. It's about our stuff, our doubt, lack of self-belief, resistance that rises within us that has to be dealt with and actually communicating with spirits, the simple bit. So there's that. Now, if you're wanting to work more in on doing readings and things like that, this is, it's a problem. And I, I'm going to be honest here. I think money plays a massive part in getting a good teacher. It doesn't guarantee you a good teacher, but If you want to work with people who are taking it seriously, who are dedicated, who are committed to spirit, you're more likely to get those people if they've paid. And I'm not saying that that always happens, but I can tell you in in all my years of teaching, whenever I offer a free workshop or a free event, you get loads of people sign up and half of them don't turn up every time. Um, so you want people that are committed and dedicated to it. There are groups on Facebook with beautiful, wonderful souls giving, doing work for free. And that's fantastic. But you might have to kiss a few frogs to find your prince. And I think there's nothing wrong with knowing that it might, that space, that class, that particular teacher isn't right for you and moving on. Um, I think it's really hard when you're in a spiritual journey, if you're like me, you're trying to be a good girl all the time. And then you end up in these groups with people that just don't resonate with you. It's just not right for you. And you're just torturing yourself because you want to be polite. So even if it's free, make sure it's the right fit for you. So I hope that that helps and gives you some ideas of different things that you can do. And a great thing to do if you're wanting to develop your evidential mediumship is to call on people's loved ones in spirit, not necessarily people you know, but just different energies and different things that you want to expand. So for example, if you think I want to expand from my relationships, because at the moment I seem to get a lot of grandmothers and grandfathers. You can do a practice session and say, I'd like to experience an aunt. Can an aunt come be with me and give me that energy of aunt so you get used to feeling it? Right, I'd like to experience the energy of daughter. Can a daughter come and be with me so I can experience that? And you can do that with all aspects of your evidential mediumship. It's like building up your Rosetta Stone. The more you experience that, the more you sit with it, the more you process those different aspects, the more likely you are to be able to bring them up in a reading scenario. 
So I hope that helps and let me know if you've got any questions. Right, next question is from my dear Amanda. And she messaged me and said, when we're on a spiritual journey, do we ever get to the point that we're satisfied and feel like we don't have to learn anymore or keep evolving? It's tiring being on a never ending quest to achieve and obtain things, states of minds, abilities, wow moments, etc. How can we keep improving ourselves without getting completely into our ego? And do we have to? And the key here, Amanda, is your last point on this. Do we have to? And no, we don't. And it's always a hard balance between wanting to be better and enjoying where you're at. And you guys know, Amanda, you know me very well indeed. You know that's something I always struggle with. But generally speaking, I think it's about working out what you want from your spiritual connection. And as you guys will have heard me say many times, you don't have to be a medium. Just because you're spiritually connected and developing doesn't mean you have to be a medium. So if medium, if you don't want to be a medium, then your focus really should be on what feels right, what feels good, what lights you up and enjoying it. Um, Because as long as you know that spirit are there and you believe that spirit are there and you believe that the ability to communicate with spirit is there, what more do you need? Um, If you know that that energy is there and you're utilizing it, what, what, what else do you want? And it's a funny thing. So, as somebody that used to be able to name and see all of their six, seven spirit guides that I was working with at that time and call on them and different energies, different people, it didn't make any difference to me. I thought that was what I wanted and when I got it, I realized that it was hollow. Um, So it's always an interesting thing with spirit. As long as you can communicate with them and you can get that guidance and you feel safe, then I think our work here for the most part is about learning to live not learning to be with spirit. Uh, That said, if you really feel called to develop and really feel called that you want to do a bit more or you indeed want to be a medium, then there are, I believe, you know, certain aspects you need to work on to be of a certain standard. And um, I would love to say that I've got this, the answer to this all sorted in the bag. I'm really good at this, but Of course I'm not. As soon as I achieve one thing in my mediumship, I'm on to the next thing I want to achieve. But that's also why I like mediumship. You're never done, you're never baked. Now, as for the spiritual developing, the kind of hardness of the path, the quest, the evolution, all of that, um, I think we have a choice. I don't think we ever go through those dark nights of the soul that bring us to the next stage of our development and connection without asking for that. So I don't think spirit ever do it to us. I think we ask for it and then we get it and then we go, why? And they go, well, you said you wanted to have a stronger, clearer connection or be more vibrationally high. You said you wanted that, so we're giving it to you. And Sometimes, in honesty, I do think, in my darker moments, I do think it would be so much of an easier life if I just did a nine to five job and came home and cooked dinner and went for a run and went to bed. That would be a good life. It would be a comfortable life. So I accept that it's me that chooses the drama. <laughs> so it's about finding finding that space. And when we start looking at people, um, now obviously when you messaged me, we were talking about a spiritual guru in inverted commas that seems to, for the most part, have lost their way a little bit to me. And that is the difficulty because I think we get so focused and obviously my last podcast was all about the rise of the social media medium but nowadays we're so focused on getting that hit from likes and follows and people say seeing us and seeing it 
that that's different to the spiritual journey and I don't really think that has a lot to do with spirit I think that's very much about immersing in our human and so then you do become egotistical because you've you're in this place where everyone's fawning over you and it's not real anymore so yeah we've got to choose what we want and understand that we're in control and we're in the driving seat but there is no request as far as I'm concerned from the spirit world for us to develop or work for them these are things that we choose for ourselves and you've got to decide if you want that because it's not an easy path three out of ten do not recommend (laughs) I mean I do recommend it because I love it obviously I love mediumship but the hard stuff the difficulties the crawling broken on your hands and knees just trying to get through even when you know you're transforming even when you know it's what you asked for it's tough Um, and I completely understand why some people choose to bow out of that path okay let me just see I've got another message here that I wanted to do on this podcast we're all talking about practice and development today and this one was from my dear Kath and Kath says something I've been pondering on how do you know if you've manifested something or its intuition I often hear be careful of your thoughts as that might just happen for example I had an email from the lottery to say I'd won something I thought to myself I bet it's just a small amount and it was so had I manifested that because I thought it or just knew it because it was my intuition well Kath if you ever find the answer out to this please write in and uh, (laughs) let me know it is fascinating because I think there's a bit of both so for me manifesting is more about choosing the things that you want in your life and being sort of active and open although Abraham Hicks I know would say not to be active with it unless it's inspired but with creating and building and making whereas intuition I feel is more you've picked it up in that moment so manifesting is creating intuition is already created but I know to manifest oh god you have to say it like it's already there (laughs) I think you just know I hate flimsy answers like this but that's what I'm going to say I think you just know you know with that email from the lottery that it was your intuition you knew you didn't get that excited feeling you didn't open that saying here's my hopes and dreams you went yeah great that's because you knew I don't think you manifested that being a small amount I think you just knew that it was so I think generally speaking when you're manifesting something it's more about choosing the things that you want whether that be something in your development with the spirit world or an experience or something in your life physically tangibly and you are asking for it and waiting to receive it and knowing it's coming and holding that space whereas intuition is more of that knowing knowingness in you um, when you think of somebody before the phone rings do you manifest them calling you I think you pick up on the energy of them thinking they're going to call you so it's already in motion you don't manifest your best friend calling your best friend is thinking about you and in all those funny invisible binds that tie between us all you pick up that vibration and you know they're going to call so that's kind of an answer I hope that makes sense Uh, but there is always for me no a hundred percent answer I can give you I can just give you my take on it and if anyone's got anything they'd like to add um, that would be absolutely wonderful Okay, I think I'm going to go for one more question, and this is from Michelle. Oh, and we've made it to July, guys. Um, How do we know if it's a sign or a message is from a spirit guide or a loved one? I have a friend 
that passed in January and he shows up in my life as owls in various places and various ways. He also shows up as a specific phrase. I'm now questioning if every owl is him or is it a guide checking in? I hope this makes sense. It does my head in lol. <laughs> right, Michelle. Um, I'm going to be really irritating here and the first thing I'm going to say to you is, does it matter? Because if we remember that spirit are a oneness, that everything is connected and everybody is connected, is it your guide? Is it your loved one? What if it's both of them? What if they're tag teaming in and going, yeah, let's just show Michelle that we're with her, it's spirit. And you're there going, yeah, but which one of you is it, guys? Because I need to know. And they're like, it's us. And you're going, yeah, but who? But who? And they go, it's us, does it matter? We're with you, we love you. Yeah, but which one of you is it? Because I need to know where this message came from. And they go, no, you don't. You just need to know that we're with you. Well, I do, I feel like I do. And obviously I've overplayed that, Michelle, just because I quite enjoyed my little dramatic um, take on it there. But it is that, yeah. I think it's, it's both. It's, it's one and the other, it's both, it's all, it's everything simultaneously because that is spirit and that is amazing. As a little aside, I personally don't believe that most of our loved ones become spirit guides. I do know on the odd occasion that there is a crossover, but generally speaking, in my experience, there's always a separation. Your loved ones are one thing, your spirit guides are another. And when people come to me and they say, my loved one is, my loved one, my grandmother is now my spirit guide, I never correct them or argue with them because they are, because it's all the oneness. So even though my take on it is that spirit guides are, are different to loved ones, generally speaking, not 100% of the time, that it doesn't really matter, does it? It doesn't really matter because spirit, spirit guides aren't going to be there um, with somebody's grandmother going, well, I'm not giving that message now because she thinks it's you and I was trying to talk to her and I'm a Roman man and I'm really irritated that she's talking to you again, Florence, because I'm trying to get a word in. So no, no more messages for her, she's cut off. That's not spirit, is it? Um, there is no separation, there is only the oneness. And so it doesn't really matter. Same for the owls. How wonderful that you get them, Michelle. I'm so happy for you. What a lovely thing. Um, and I'm sure it is your beautiful friend and also your beautiful guides. Right, I've got one more thing that I need to say. So uh, Nicole's messaged in and uh, she wanted me to know that the Aramaic version of the Lord's Prayer that I shared on the last podcast is not actually Aramaic. So Denise, who sent me the link to that website, Denise, you're so naughty, Denise. It's not actually Aramaic, Denise. Um, so I just wanted to let you all know that um, because I don't want anyone to be upset or offended. I, I'm slightly disappointed because I was rather chuffed with my ability to use the word Aramaic uh, repeatedly and not get it wrong on a podcast. But sadly, I did get it completely wrong because apparently it isn't Aramaic after all. So um, apologies to all of you. I hope that you can forgive me and uh, yeah there we go but it was still rather beautiful wasn't it and uh, whether it was Aramaic or not I really did think the words in it were lovely and I'm very grateful that you shared that Denise and apologies Nicole that I was wrong so there we go I will speak to you all again on Thursday but as always if you've got a question or anything you want to let me know uh, please just email podcast at hannahmedium.co.uk. Have a great day.